Hey, we're up to the third aliyah for the Torah reading for Parshas Noach, and I am trying to go a little bit quick through these aliyahs, although obviously, you know, I could spend probably 10,000 million hours on each, on each verse. Uh, verse 17 um, for the third aliyah. Now the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and they lifted the ark and it rose off the earth. So we know that the flood's been going on for some time because eventually it got to be, the water was so high that it actually had enough uh, buoyancy. The ark had enough buoyancy to be lifted off the ground on its own. And the waters became powerful and they increased very much upon the earth and the ark moved upon the waters. Like who is this talking to? Like why is this evening to be read? Because remember everybody's dead now at this point basically. So you know, like, who are we telling the story to? And, like, why are we telling that this happened? Because, you know, it wouldn't have been enough to, to say, like, like one sentence about it. Like, but no, it continues. And the waters became exceedingly powerful upon the earth. The lofty mountains were, that were under the heavens were covered up. Fifteen cubits above the waters did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered up. So it's very interesting. And all the flesh perished that moved upon the earth among the fowl, among the cattle, among the beasts, among all the creeping creep, creatures that creep upon the earth, and all the mankind. I mean, obviously, if, there, if the, there's so much, I mean, you'd think that that would happen within, like, 40 days ago, like, like all of a sudden, like, we don't, I mean, it's kind of odd that we need to be told this. And also, we were told that it was going to happen, and God doesn't, like, ever lie. So, I mean, and we know that God didn't change his mind over here. So, uh, like, it's kind of interesting that the Torah sort of is repetitive. Everything that had the breath of life uh, had the breath of the spirit of life in its nostrils, and all that were on the dry land died. I mean, duh. Okay. And it, the flood, blotted out all the beings that were upon the face of the earth. Okay, we get the idea uh, of face of the earth, from man to animal to creeping thing to creeping things and to the fowl of the heavens. How, why were the birds, the birds, how were the birds trapped in the, I mean, I guess it doesn't ignore the land. So how did they die? Like with the, I mean, okay, so it was raining, right? So it was raining and the water. So they were sort of like trapped. So I don't really understand that, but okay. And they were, now the fish didn't die. Okay. So, cause you know, they don't, you know, maybe they never mentioned the fish and the fish can't go into the ark. So fish need to live in the, you know, fish and all the aquatic animals, you know, what about amphibians? You know, are they like, does the alligator and the turtle, like all these amphibious, animals where do they fit into this story because they need to live in water right sometimes okay and the uh, what did i say okay and and it the flood blooded out all beings that were upon the face of the earth from man to animal to creeping thing and to the fowl of the heavens and they were blooded out from the earth and only noah and those who were with him in the ark survived i mean this sounds kind of obvious i'm not really sure what the tour is telling us and the waters prevail, prevailed upon the earth 150 days from the first 40 days i mean we do we do know eventually it's i mean according to the to the let's say the uh traditional luach of uh, the sidra of the the uh you know the the the, the traditional v jewish view about this flood is that it took about a year a year's course it's about 360 some odd days of uh, time okay and god remembered no, okay, we know that god doesn't have a, doesn't have god doesn't have memory all right, I'm, whatever. I'm not going to keep on going into this. God, I mean, the, it is true that the Torah writes it like this, and it is causes does lead one to have a lot of questions, which are valid questions, and you know we can all like discuss that at another time. And God remembered Noah and all the beasts and the cattle that were, in, were with him in the ark. I mean, God obviously doesn't forget anything, so God doesn't have a memory. And God caused the spirit to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. Where did all the water go? And the springs of the deep were closed, and the windows of the heavens and the rain from the heavens were without. But if the water all evaporated, or made the water that was okay, so the water went back to its water table, to the water table that's below the surface, and then all the rain just stopped. But there still needed to be some evaporation, which would have caused some rain, some rain to keep on raining. Uh, and the water receded from the earth more and more. Right, so this took time, and the water diminished at the end of 150 days. Is that an additional 150 days? And the ark came to rest at the and okay in the seventh month. On the 17th day of the month on the mount, mountains of Ararat, which is in Turkey area. And, and the waters constantly diminished until the 10th. So it's sort of like Noah went in a big circle, right? Noah didn't even really go anywhere. Like It's not like the ark went all the way to like, you know, North America or something like that or South America. It literally basically just went in a big circle. And, and the waters constantly diminished until the 10th month. And, and so it's continuing. So after the seventh month, the ark like landed on the top of the mountain and the mountains the, the water continued went down until the 10th month and the 10th month and the first of the month the, the mountain peaks appeared so we're still still we're and it came to pass at the end of 40 days so another 40 days 
Then Noak opened the window of the ark that he had made. So finally, Noak like opens up the you know the the window over there, and he's like, let's out a breath of fresh air. And he's like, oh my god, it was really stinky in there. I mean, imagine all the, the the poop. Like, what did he do with all all the feces from all those animals? Ugh. There's so much to think about about what happened in the ark. And believe it or not, I'm sure some of you do know this. The actual Jewish midrashim do discuss what actually happened inside that ark for the whole year that this was going on. It discusses you know Noah's life inside like this living zoo. It must have been it must have been horrible. And he knew that everybody was dying. Wow. And he sent forth ah. So here we get the famous, 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 famous dove. The famous dove. And he sent forth the dove from him to see what whether the waters had abated from. From upon the face of the earth, this is the most one of the most famous images in probably all the Judaism and all Torah. Maybe one of the, the most symbols of peace was the dove went out, was sent forth to look for it. And guess what? Nobody reads the next verse. Like they have this image of the dove, but they never read the next verse. It's so funny. Everybody like knows verse eight, but nobody knows verse nine. Here we go. And the dove found no resting place for for the sole of its foot, so it returned to him. Because there was no, there was still water upon the surface of the entire surface of the earth. So he stretched forth his hand and took it and he brought it into the ark. So you know what? This symbol of peace, which is the dove, which everybody knows internationally in the whole world, you know, knows as the symbol of peace, the dove and the and the and the, and the olive branch didn't even happen. That's not what happened. At least not yet. Okay. And Noah waited another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove a second time from the ark. And the dove returned for him at the at the evening tide. And behold, it plucked an olive leaf. So here we go. So we see that peace takes at least two times. You're not gonna not, you're not necessarily necessarily gonna have you know a solution. The first, you know, your first your first offer isn't always accepted. Like if you make an offer to somebody or you know you offer some sort of peace agreement or some sort of settlement of a dispute, it's not necessarily gonna be accepted the first time around, right? So this is the message of the Torah the second time. He, uh, the Noah, so what happened? The dove did return, plucked the olive leaf. This is where the famous imagery number 11. So Noah knew that the water had abated from, from upon the earth. So how did he know that? How did the olive branch teach him that? So there's a whole lot of commentary upon that, which I'm not going to get into because we're just going to try and stick strictly to the verses. And he waited again another seven days and he sent forth the dove and it no longer continued to return to him. So that was, so the dove was eventually the symbol of peace. The fact that it did find a place to settle showed Noah that everything was going to be okay. And it came to pass in the 600th and first year, in the first month, on the first of the month, okay, so it's very, very precise, that the waters dried up from upon the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark which he'd already did, he'd own, before he opened up the, wi the window. So now there's a covering on top of the ark. So I'm not sure what exactly that means. And he saw and behold, the surface of the ground, ground had died, dried up. So not only that, he knew that the ground was dry. It wasn't just that there, that there was a good enough situation for the dove, he, you know, human beings could, and other animals could actually be on the ground because the ground wasn't one big swamp. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Yay! Woo but oh my God, if we think about it, all of humanity died. And, and ten, millions and millions of animals. So we had an extinction level event. And this is being recorded in the Holy Torah for all to read. Wow. Pretty scary. Okay, that's the end of the third Leah.